Reinhard grew up as a kind and caring kid until he gets betrayed by the person who is supposed to protect his innocence. Fueled by anger and rage, Reinhard now wants revenge against all royalty, determined to become the new supreme ruler of the galaxy, until nothing stays in his way. A massive nuclear war between nations made humans leave Earth and immigrate to space. Humanity is then divided into two interstellar nations, the Free Planets Alliance ruled by a president than the Galactic Empire which has most of the colony worlds of the galaxy under their emperor. For the past 150 years, both interstellar powers have been fighting a never-ending war that has caused millions of casualties. Reinhardt is an ambitious boy who lives on the Odin planet of the Galactic Empire with his poor aristocratic family. Growing up, he lost his mother in a car accident and was neglected by his father. His only comfort and ray of light is his elder sister Anna Rose who is gentle and beautiful and cares for him like a mother. They meet their new neighbor Kerchays, who quickly proves himself to be a loyal friend, and the youthful days spent together with the three of them pass by happily. But their happiness is short-lived. One day, Reinhard finds that his father sold Anaros off as a concubine to Kaiser Friedrich, the emperor of the Galactic Empire. He confronts his father in rage, but his father only replies that he had no choice. Anaros appears to soothe him, but Reinhard refuses to be consoled. His only ray of light has been snatched away from him, and the anger and resentment fuel his newfound ambitions. He joins a cadet school to become a soldier, swearing to rise through the ranks, so that one day, he can become powerful enough to overthrow the tyranny and become the emperor. He recruits Kerches into his mission, and together, the two friends dedicate their lives to get Anaros back and return to their happy days. At the age of 20, Reinhard becomes the head admiral of a fleet thanks to his impressive intellectual skills and ambitious nature. He is assigned to conquer the Astart Star Zone from the Alliance. During the strategic meeting in his warship, he learns that the rival forces are double the size of his own Imperial fleet, which allows the enemies to divide their forces into three fleets to surround them. Seeing the impossible situation, his vice admirals request to retreat, but Reinhard refuses. He tells them to face the fight head-on instead, because it will be foolish to retreat when victory is already theirs. The others are shocked at his words, none of them are convinced, but they are forced to obey. On Reinhard's order, the Imperial Army cuts off Alliance communication and advances straight toward the smallest fleet in the middle. The enemy is slow to react and gets fired out at close range before they can activate their shields. As a result, most of the warships are destroyed. Reinhard instructs his forces to head toward the next smallest fleet. They easily overwhelm the enemy with a barrage of gunfire. Before defeating them, Reinhard asks them to surrender, but the incompetent Alliance commander refuses the suggestion and fires back. So as a final blow, Reinhard orders to launch armor-piercing ammunition which shatters and destroys the fleet warships. Only one fleet is left, and the Imperial Army advances toward it confidently. But despite being outnumbered, they intercept a broadcast transmitted by Commander Yong, telling the remaining Alliance forces to follow his instructions if they want to survive. Thinking he's nothing but a show-off, Reinhard orders his army to break through the center to challenge Yong. However, his plan backfires. Yang orders his fleet to split up and trap Reinhard's fleet to counterattack. The Imperial Army tries to catch the rear of the fleet, but both sides are trapped in an awkward ring formation, biting at each other's tails but neither side wins. Unwilling to waste resources in a pointless battle, Reinhard calls for a retreat, allowing Yang to do the same. Reinhard realizes that Yang is an opponent on par with his own tactical brilliance. He sends a message acknowledging him as a rival, respecting his bravery and wishing to meet him again. After the success of the Astart battle, Reinhard returns to Odin. There, Kaiser Friedrich promotes him to Fleet Admiral. Reinhard establishes a mansion to assemble commoners and lesser-known commanders of the Imperial Navy. He promotes Kerchays to Vice Admiral, making him hold a stronger position in court as Reinhard's right-hand man. One day, Reinhard learns that Yang conquered one of their planets, the Iserlone Fortress. Therefore, Alliance can now easily invade Empire territory because the fortress is located in the only navigable route between Empire and Alliance. An officer named Oberstein, one of the survivors of the Iserlone fleet, appears to seek Reinhard's help to avoid getting executed for deserting the fortress. He expresses his hatred towards the ruling dynasty for its tyranny and discrimination against people with physical disabilities like him, and wants to destroy it. Kerchays puts a gun on Oberstein for such rebellious statements, but Oberstein believes that Kerchays can never kill anyone in cold blood. He tells Reinhard that he would need someone who would do his dirty work for him if he wants to become the Emperor. Seeing that Oberstein had figured out his plan, Reinhard accepts the plea for help. 
and makes him his shadow, someone who's willing to take any immoral but necessary step for his master. Three months later, the Alliance sends out a massive expedition force of 30 million men to invade the Empire. Reinhardt is assigned to retaliate in response to their invasion. He gathers his subordinates to have a strategy meeting. He ignores his subordinates' suggestions and shocks them, telling them his plan to draw the enemy close enough and completely destroy them. He wants to make them suffer heavy losses so that they will never try a foolish invasion like this again. The Alliance forces fall into Reinhardt's trap with no chance of retreating. Reinhardt sends troops under Kirchhase's command to destroy their supply fleet. After the supply line is cut off, Reinhardt's forces strike the enemy with full force, resulting in the Alliance fleets either getting completely destroyed or suffering heavy casualties. Despite the heavy losses, the fleet admiral of Alliance refuses to give up and orders the remaining fleets to regroup in the Amritsar Star Zone. Reinhardt orders his forces to crush them once and for all. The stage is set where the two rivals of the universe, Reinhardt and Yang, will face each other once again in Amritsar. All admirals of Reinhardt's fleet take their designated position to attack at the enemy simultaneously and trap them in an encirclement. However, the Alliance's fleets protect themselves by hiding behind a minefield. To surround them, Kerchase penetrates the enemy's minefield and ignites the area, blowing up many Alliance warships. Wanting to be the one to defeat the infamous Yang, Bittenfeld, one of Reinhardt's admirals, rushes into battle without thinking it through. Yang baits the enemy close enough to take down most of Bittenfeld's fleet. Due to Bittenfeld's reckless decision, Reinhardt's battle plan fails, allowing Yang's fleets to retreat when they should be destroyed. After the battle, most of the higher-ups resign from the Alliance side and Yang gets promoted to Admiral. On the other hand, Reinhardt bursts out in anger at Bittenfeld for costing them a clean and absolute victory. He promises to punish Bittenfeld and his men, but Kerchase pulls him to the side and mentions that aren't the true Reinhardt. Eventually, Reinhardt admits that he's furious not with Bittenfeld, but with himself for being defeated by Yang not once but twice now, making him look like an idiot. Upon returning to Odin, Reinhardt learns that Kaiser Friedrich has passed away. He takes Anaros to his mansion away from the city. There, she can finally live a free and happy life for the first time since being sold off as a child, as Reinhardt had sworn to do all these years. But Reinhardt's mission is far from over. The Kaiser had died without naming a successor, and soon, the battle for the succession begins. Lichtenlaid, the Prime Minister wanting to keep his position, asks Reinhard to back the five-year-old Prince Erwin Joseph to become the new Kaiser. In exchange, Reinhard will become more powerful. Reinhard agrees, and becomes the Commander-in-Chief of the Imperial Space Fleet while Erwin becomes the new Puppet Emperor. Since Reinhard is getting powerful, Different nobles of higher positions including Duke Braunschweig and Marquis Littenheim formed the Lipstadt Pact to fight against him. Before the Alliance takes advantage of the Empire's internal political war to invade, Reinhard orders Kerchase to exchange prisoners of war with them. Among those prisoners, Reinhard installed a spy to start a rebellion in the Alliance. This results in Yang's fleet becoming busy managing their own conflict. Meanwhile Reinhard meets the daughter of Count Mariendorf named Hilda. She believes a new era is coming which will be under Reinhard's control. She offers her family's loyalty by marrying and supporting him in the civil war against the nobility. The hostility rises when Lipstadt tries to kidnap Anaros to weaken Reinhard. Fortunately, Kerchase stops them in time and foils their plan. In retaliation, Reinhard takes control of key facilities in Odin and arrests many conspirators involved in the crime. However, Braunschweig and his followers manage to flee to regroup their forces in Jairsberg Fortress. Therefore, Reinhard sends his forces to take control of the fortress. There, they're forced to infiltrate the fortress and engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat with the mighty opponent High Admiral Ovlisser. After eight hours of combat without defeat, Ovlisser transmits a message to Reinhard provoking him by calling him a good-for-nothing and insulting his sister. The message causes Reinhard to lose his composure, and he orders his admirals to capture Ovlisser so he can make him suffer instead. After taking charge of the fortress, Reinhard sends Ovlisser back to Braunschweig as the only survivor, just to make him suffer by making him seem like a traitor. Braunschweig reacts as Reinhard is planned and kills Ovlisser, thinking of him as a traitor and creating mistrust among the Lipstadt. Reinhard then decides to finally take Braunschweig and his men down. To lure them out, Reinhard broadcasts a message to either fight him or surrender cowardly. Braunschweig falls into Reinhard's provocation and leads the Lipstadt forces into battle. The Imperial fleets pretend to retreat which fools the overconfident Lipstadt forces into letting their guard down. 
As a result, Reinhard's fleet surrounds them from both ends and goes into full attack mode. But Braunschweig's forces manage to escape from complete annihilation. Meanwhile, the Westerland, a planet ruled by Braunschweig, starts to revolt due to his tyrannical rule causing the death of his nephew. For vengeance, Braunschweig plans to launch a nuclear strike on the planet. Reinhard learns about the mad plan and orders to stop it, but Oberstein suggests just letting it happen. He wants to record the devastation and use it as proof to show that the nobles have no right to rule the empire. Reinhard opposes the idea, unwilling to let two million people die, but Oberstein says that more will die if they drag out the civil war. Determined to complete his personal mission, Reinhard stands idle and lets the nuclear attack happen. The captured image of the nuke and destroyed Westerland is later shown to the whole empire. Due to this, the public sentiments turned away from the old regime of the nobility, just as Reinhard hoped, but with a great cost of millions of lives that will forever haunt him forever with guilt. At the headquarters, Reinhard receives a message from his sister Anna Rose, advising him to always remember what is truly important, and to remember that Kirchhees has always been by his side as his trusted friend. Kerchies rejoins Reinhard and confronts him about the Westerland incident. Reinhard admits he knew about the strike beforehand. Kerchies comments that no number of flowery words can cover the guilt of two million innocent deaths on his hands. Reinhard snaps and lashes out at Kerchies, telling him to keep his opinions to himself and reminding him of his place as a mere subordinate. What is supposed to be a heartfelt reunion turns out to be a bitter confrontation between the two friends. After their argument, Oberstein advises Reinhard to treat all his subordinates equally instead of giving special treatment to Kirchhees. The Lipstadt forces begin war once again. On Reinhard's order, Kirchhees deploys to destroy the enemy's advance guard. Meanwhile, other admirals of the Imperial fleet attack the Lipstadt forces from all sides in waves, crushing the enemy's will and as a result, they are completely defeated. In the Jairsburg Fortress, Reinhard assembles his squad for a victory celebration during which he receives prisoners of war from the defeated Lipstadt. During such meetings, the security guards usually take the weapons away from everyone except Kirchhees, who has special permission to carry his weapon at all times as Reinhard's closest confidant. However that day, Kirchhees had to give away his weapon to attend the meeting. This means that Reinhard has decided to treat his subordinates equally without any exception, showing no partiality. The prisoners enter in Ansbach, the servant of Braunschweig, arrives in the hall along with his master's coffin. Before anyone can react, he suddenly takes out a weapon hidden inside the coffin to avenge his master by shooting at Reinhard. A timely intervention by Kirchhees causes him to miss. Despite having no weapon to protect himself, Kirchhees doesn't hesitate to save his friend. He manages to disarm Ansbach, but not before being shot through the chest. Other admirals capture Ansbach but he quickly bites on a pill and dies. Reinhard witnesses the whole thing in shock and disbelief. They call for a doctor, but Kirchhees knows it's already too late for him. Reinhard falls to his side and grips his hand, refusing to believe that his best friend is dying. But Kirchhees only apologizes, and with his last breath, he tells Reinhard to make the universe his own. Reinhard breaks down as his friend's hand falls from his grip, and he loses his most trusted and dearest companion. Oberstein seizes this opportunity to put the blame for the assassination on Lichtenlaid to get rid of him. The admirals return to Odin and arrest him, securing an imperial seal to establish Reinhard's authority. Meanwhile, Reinhard secludes himself away in mourning, but Oberstein arrives to tell him that Anneros is calling, after he revealed to her about Kirche's death without Reinhard's permission. Reinhard gets angry. But in response, Oberstein gives him a reality check to take responsibility as a leader. Reinhard speaks with Anna Rose, who pities him for having no one else he cares about enough to lose. Reinhard reminds her that he still had her, but Anna Rose reveals that she is leaving the mansion and going far from him. They are living totally different lives, and it's best for them to not see each other. And so, in a matter of a few days, Reinhard loses the most important people in his life, Kirchhees and Anna Rose. After returning to Odin, Reinhard is promoted to the position of Duke as well as the new Prime Minister. And since the Emperor is a kid, he becomes the ruler of the Empire, having complete power over the military and politics. This is the beginning of a new era under Reinhard's dictatorship. After his rise to power, he visits Kirche's grave. He awarded many titles to Kirche's after his death, but on his grave is simply engraved the most important of them all. My friend, a title no one else has ever earned. Despite winning multiple wars and becoming the most powerful person in the universe, Reinhard has also lost two of the most important people in his life. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.